Wow. Portable video monitors are very useful bits of kit, especially if you have a camera like the Sony a7 III that doesn't have a flip out screen, or if you use a gimbal. Unfortunately, they tend to cost a fair bit, especially if you want a good one. A lot of the cheaper options have a flimsy feeling plasticky construction and require you to carry extra batteries, making the whole affair a bit of a faff. The thing is, most of us carry a really high quality screen in our pockets at all times. My phone, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, is a few years old now, but it still has a high resolution OLED display. To get this on a video monitor, you'd be looking at spending at least a grand. For around about 10 quid, I've figured a way to use my phone as a HDMI monitor. And today I'm gonna to show you how. To start with, I have to say, I've only tried this with Android. Maybe it is possible with Apple, but I wouldn't know where to start. So apologies to all the Apple fans out there. You may have already seen a few options to use your Android device as a video monitor using USB or Wi-Fi. Some of these implementations are very cool. I especially love the Panasonic remote app, which allows you to control all kinds of features over Wi-Fi. But as neat as these are, they've never been a replacement for a good old fashioned HDMI monitor. This is due to the high latency and low resolution, which means they're not ideal for nailing focus or for fast moving shots. I recently picked up this thing for nine pounds on eBay. It's essentially a knockoff Elgato cam link for an incredibly low price. Epos Vox made a video about it and was able to get some impressive results considering the price of this thing. It goes by a few different names, but it's easy to find. It's usually called something like HDMI to USB 2.0 capture card. The only things you need for this are the capture card, an OTG adapter for your phone, mine is USB Type-C, but yours might be micro USB, and a HDMI cable. For the OTG adapter, be sure to choose one with a length of cable between the ports. Otherwise you'll have the capture card sticking out of the side of your phone like this. It still works, but you can imagine how easy it would be to knock that out. Hardware wise, you just plug the HDMI cable into the output of your camera and the other end into the capture card. Then plug the capture card into the OTG adapter and the other end into your phone. You'll need to download an app that can view a USB webcam input via OTG. There's a few that will work, but since the Android 10 update, USB camera inputs seem to be a bit balked. If you just want to get up and running real quick, you can install an app called FP Viewer, which you can find under EasyCab and UVC Player on the Play Store. This app is designed for analog drone feeds. It should just work straight away. However, the quality isn't the best. It looks like the feed is being downscaled to standard definition, and when you go full screen, it just stretches the image. If you're finding the camera feed doesn't show up, just unplug and replug the OTG adapter while the camera is turned on, and it should appear. After a few hours of fiddling, the best option I found in terms of quality is an app called Endoscope HD Camera, presumably designed for those who like to stick cameras where the sun don't shine. But it's HD, and that's the important part. Due to the changes in the Android 10 update, you have to download the APK direct from their website. If you download the app from the Play Store, it gives you a link to click through within the app itself. Once you've installed the APK, it updates the app with the required permissions, and then you have a beautifully crisp image from the HDMI feed. Easy peasy. Of course, there is some latency between the camera and the monitor. However, I find this to be pretty much in line with mid-range video monitors, and it's perfectly usable. To make this setup a little more secure, I took a quarter 20 tripod stud and super glued it onto the rear of the capture card. This allowed me to then screw it into the cheese plate on the back of the phone mount, giving me a really secure setup. Of course, some gaffer tape or zip ties always is the trick too. And that's that, a really easy way to use your phone or tablet as a high quality HDMI monitor. I'm sure there's plenty of other cool things you could do with this setup too. Like maybe you're editing a video that's primarily going to be viewed on mobile. You could connect your phone to your PC and set it as your preview monitor, allowing you to get the full user experience from your video. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other ideas for what it can be used for. This next use case is very niche, but Twitter user Black Velma reached out to me asking for a way to use my GL2 DVR hack with her Sony FX7. So just for you, if you hit record in the app, you can record HD video from your FX7 directly into your phone. No more tapes. For mounting the phone or tablet onto the camera, there's a plethora of options, but I'm really pleased with the ones I've found. 
This phone clamp from Wu Hotto, great name, is on the pricier side at around £20, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. It's made of CNC'd aluminium and has a strong clamping mechanism, which is also lockable with this little dial on the rear. That's something I've never actually seen on a phone mount. It can be rotated into portrait mode with another lockable lever, and it even has a cold shoe mount and a cheese plate, making it perfect for camera rigs. Something I didn't realise until it arrived is that the base also fits into Arca Swiss clamps, which is handy for me as I use them on all my tripods. The only downside to this mount is that it's not tiltable, so you want to use a ball head or a friction arm of some kind. I'm using this tiny arm from a small rig, but a cold shoe ball head would do the job nicely too. I've got mine mounted on this top handle from 7 Oak that just clamps into the cold shoe on the camera. I've had this one for several years and I really like it, so I'll link that in the description as well as all the other bits. Thanks again for watching, hit subscribe if you want to see more bodges and hacks, I've got a bunch in the works. I'm also going to be updating the Mini DV DVR project, so if you're a GL2 guy or a VX1000 guy, keep them peeled for that one. Toodles!